You're listening to Art of the Unknown, the podcast about traveling inwards, outwards, and onwards. Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. Last week, I talked about the ways in which traveling aids in spiritual growth. So this week, I want to go in the complete opposite direction. Last week, I talked about how traveling changes your outside world. And this week, I want to talk about how your outside world changes your inside world. Basically, I want to talk about traveling inwards and the importance of it. I think last week I made the comment that traveling inwards is a rabbit hole and that that is a different conversation for a different day. And unfortunately, I did not think that that conversation was going to come up so soon, but recent events have occurred and it's becoming very obvious that the place that I need to direct my attention is inwards. So a lot has happened in the past few days. There are a lot of glasses shattering all around me, meaning that there are a lot of things in this world and myself that I thought were true, and they're slowly, slowly revealing themselves to me as not. There's been a lot of different signs pointing in a lot of different directions, and you know what? I like to avoid the street signs. I like to think I know where I'm going. I like to think I know what I'm doing. And you know what? I like to think that I'm right. And I'm starting to realize that maybe I am not as correct or as aware as I think I am. Like I said, A lot has happened in the past week and it's making me realize that the places that I have been avoiding within myself are in fact the places that I need to go the most. I have been avoiding really going down a few rabbit holes for a very, very long time. Why? I think it's very obvious that I am scared. I am afraid of what's down there. I am afraid of what I'm going to find. And a little bit of me is afraid of what is on the other side. I'm afraid of going in that direction and seeing where I end up. (sighs) Okay, but when I look down the door, depths of my soul, okay, I kind of have that same feeling of fear as I did before when I was getting ready to leave the country, except the fears are very similar in a way because it is going in a direction that I have no idea what's going to happen. But the difference is, as opposed to me looking into the future and getting on a plane, the difference between that and looking down the rabbit hole that is myself. I feel like looking down the rabbit hole, the fear is a little bit calmer because I know that I don't have to go in that direction as opposed to before when I had my ticket, I was getting on that plane. My entire world that I can see visually and experience, that was changing. And yes, that was scary because it was all in front of me. But I think it was scary because everything was in the moments of shifting, if that makes any sense. But when I look down the freaking, (laughs) the deep, dark pit that is my soul, and I think about going down in that direction, it's almost as though the fear is is a deeper, a deeper, stronger fear, but it's not as prevalent. It's, I know it's really, it's really hard to explain, but either way, I know that I need to go in that direction 
and I know that I've been putting it off for way too long and (laughs) I really don't want to do it. I really would much rather prefer not going in that direction, but I feel like it's time and I have to and I just need to pull the plug on it and I need to freaking suck it up and I need to do it. And a strange thing is, is that me going in that direction kind of almost sort of feels like it's why I'm here to begin with. It's almost as though it's why I began this journey without even realizing it from the beginning. And it's slowly becoming obvious of what I need to do. And it's like I knew it the whole time, but I wasn't consciously aware of it. And it's scary. I'm scared. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm scared of myself. I'm scared of the outside world. I'm a freaking, I'm afraid of a lot of things. (laughs) Oh, man, which makes this whole little thing a little bit more difficult. But it's something that we have to do for ourselves And it's a step that no one else is going to take for us. Okay, so what is the importance of going internally? What is the importance of changing the things inside of you that are just not right? Why? Why? Why even bother doing it? Why are we here? Why struggle and make those changes? Okay, I'll tell you why. (laughs) So the outside world is a 100% reflection of the inside world. So in quantum physics, everything in the physical begins from the metaphysical. It begins first as a wave and then as a particle. Okay, so that's quantum physics, right? That's science. So if we think about it, that means that everything that is going on internally that is where it starts. That can be seen as the wavelength. That can be seen as the metaphysical, the soul, the spirit, the minds, feelings. Those are all metaphysical aspects of the self. They are not of the physical world. You can't see them. You can't touch them. I guess you can feel them. But then again, what is feeling? What exactly is that feeling that we're feeling? I don't. What is that feeling that we're feeling? I don't know. And then the world. Clearly, clearly we're living in a physical reality. We see things. We can touch things. We're not making it up unless it's all a dream, which it maybe is. That's a different topic. Anyways, the inside world begins first. That is where it begins. That is where we go within. And that is a deep, deep hole that we have to explore. Because we need to know what's down there. We need to know what the hell is creating our reality. So when you can begin to make changes on the inside, only then will they begin to manifest and be reflected in the outside world so when it comes to like talking about living life or creating the life that you want or in general just getting the things you want in life and changing your life and just not doing the same thing every single day day in and day out and experiencing new experiences no matter what you're doing creating what you want is going to have to start by creating it inside of you first. I don't really know a lot about manifesting. I I mean, yeah, I've looked into it. I don't habitually practice it, but I get the kind of general gist and a great explanation I heard is that in order for something to be manifested, you need to al- you need to be in alignment with it. You need to be in line with it with your heart and your mind. And when those two things are one in your belief and your intention, and then that way that's when you start manifesting things in the physical world. So meaning that is the internal. The internal needs to be right first before it can be reflected in the outside world. You cannot change the outside world and expect the inside world to change after. 
as much as you try to change the outside world, the inside world, it's not going to follow. That's not how it works. It's the opposite. If you go and change and make the inside world whole, complete, and happy, and then it's that's when things on the outside world start to change. It can go in the opposite direction too. If your inside world is 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 not right, if there's problems, if there's things you haven't addressed, if there's demons down there that you haven't even that you've been running from your whole life, then you know what? There's going to be some things that are going to come up physically in the physical world that you're not going to like and that scares me a little bit and you know that is kind of what's been happening to me there are things inside of me that I know are wrong that I know are just (sighs) oh man that that are places that I do not want to go and that I've been avoiding. And because of that, there are physical things in the world happening that I do not want, I do not like, and I really, really want to change. And no matter what I do physically, it's 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 starting to, to show me that, yeah, I need to do what I need to do on the inside. And the thing with the metaphysical is it's there whether you want to believe it or not, okay? For example, like I said, there is parts of me that I need to address and that I need to take care of, and they're not going to go away until I do it. I can deny their existence all I want, but at the end of the day, they're still there, and they're going to wait there, and they're just going to hang out until I'm ready to fucking do something about it, okay? And addressing these issues is very, very scary. I'm scared. I don't want to do it, but I'm coming to realize that I have to. (sighs) I've already made the physical leap into the unknown. Now it's becoming obvious I need to go in that direction metaphysically. And I'm really hoping it's not as, it's not as horrible and as painful as I think it is. It might be, it might suck. It might be painful for a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's just going to have to, on the other I'm gonna have to go on the other side so the reason I finally feel that I need to address my issues is because not because I want there's things outside in this world I need to change and how I relate to the world I know that I know that but also because it's also because when you become aware of something you kind of can't really become unaware of it and the cost of that awareness becomes responsibility because once you are aware of something I don't know about you but I feel like I don't know even even realizing that I don't know that something I was doing was wrong or something a product I was using was actually hurting my body once you become aware of that fact you can't you can't unknow it. So you, you I become re- I feel a responsibility in the sense that now I have to do something different. I have to make a change. I can't keep doing what I was doing knowing this information. So once you become aware of something within you that you know deep down you need to change, you can't really ignore it for that much longer. Yes, you can try to put it off again and again and again, but eventually your consciousness and your awareness is going to keep on going back to that issue, and it has been for me. It has been, especially in the past year. My attention, my focus, my whatever has just kept on going back to this issue, and it's. I feel like at this point it's not going to go away. It's not. I need to address it. And it's not going to go away until I do so. And that kind of makes me a little bit angry because I really don't want to do it. And I don't think it's fair that I have to do it. And I don't, I didn't ask for it, but you know what? That's life, right? Okay. So I don't even know what my point is. Do I even have a point? That is going to be up to you to decide, unfortunately, because this past week, emotionally, 
spiritually, mentally, I've been all over the place. And I feel like it's a little bit reflected in this episode. And I'm okay with that because that is exactly where I am. I'm not going to act like I'm somewhere I'm not. I need to be where I am. And if I am all over the place this week, then that is exactly where I need to be. Okay? Okay. So, changing yourself first. Changing the world within, right? World within equals the world without. Okay? It goes from here, inside to outside. That's how the arrow points. It does not point from the outside world to the inside world. World. Even Buddha said it. Even Buddha knew the truth. Even Buddha knew what was up. Okay? Love you, Buddha. He said, we are what we think. All that we are is a result of what we have thought, and with our thoughts, we create the world. Okay? Same logic. Internal world creates our external world. What we see in this physical reality is a reflection of the inside, okay? So, there's been a lot of a lot of glass shattering in my internal world this week. Um, fun stuff. Not fun at the moment, but fun stuff. I mean, it, like it has to happen. Okay, so how how do I do this? How do I address what is inside of me? And I think the first part is again and again and again and again and again is giving up the need for control. Okay, that is obvious. We can't control these things. They We need to let them go. We need to freaking release control. So giving up control, that is obvious. But it's also letting go of the need to be right. Not just right about things in the outside world. Okay, but... It's also to let go of beliefs that you have about yourself, but also about the identity that you think you possess. This is a big one for me. This is what I'm learning, okay? So in order for me to change internally, I need to let go of who I think I am Because I have such defined grips on myself. There are parts of me that I identify with and I am, have been almost positive that those are parts of me and that's who I am and that's what I'm like and that's how I define myself. So giving up your identity means giving up parts of yourself that you identify with, okay? It's the parts of you that you are holding on to tightly and it's those parts it's those parts of you that you're holding on to the most those are the ones that you need to give up not because it's not who you are it's simply because of the fact that you are holding on to them the tightest okay we can't know the truth about ourselves If we think we already have it figured out. We can't be open to other possibilities about ourselves or the world. If we think that we have it all defined and everything is just, everything is already laid out on the table. But this week has definitely been a week that I am coming to terms that I am going to have to give up a part of what I thought was my identity. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but this is very, very hard for me to talk about. But I have... I don't even know how to put it. The past, I've had a seed planted in my head for who, for who knows for how long, but it's finally having to come to light and I'm finally going to have to walk down that path. I have been vegetarian for the past, uh, how old am I? Okay. I've been vegetarian for the past 16 years. 
right? I'm 26. I started, I became vegetarian when I was 10 years old. And that, for some reason, that's just who, a part, that was a part of myself that I always knew was pretty solid. I was like, yep, I'm definitely vegetarian. No question about it. (laughs) But recent events and recent changes in my life and everything, I am going to have to start eating fish. (laughs) I'm not happy about this. I've never had fish before. I mean, I think I probably had fish sticks when I was like five, but that's that's about it. So coming to terms with the fact that I'm going to be changing my diet into a pescatarian diet is hard because just simply the thought of eating fish disgusts me. But what's harder is the fact that I'm going to have to be giving up a part of myself that I had identified with almost my entire life. And I'm going to be, I don't know me as not a vegetarian. I don't know me as, as that. And it's more, it's more than, I know people are probably listening like, oh, you're going to eat fish. You're fucking over it. Like, what is the big deal? Well, I'm telling you what the big deal is. And the big deal is that that is something that I have identified with. And that is, like I said, I don't know me. That's not, I don't, I don't know me as not a vegetarian. So with this whole little, you know, stepping into the unknown thing, I feel like I need to also step into the unknown in the physical sense and this is part of that journey it is the beginning of that journey I am going to be starting to incorporate fish into my diet this week and it's scary I really don't want to do it but I'm going to because I am I feel like I'm a guinea pig and I am just (laughs) shattering everything All the glasses that I thought I knew, even the ones about myself and even the glasses I really don't want to shatter. Okay, but I'm going to do it. So my point being is that it comes down to also, okay, in order to change the inside, we're also going to need to release parts of ourselves that we've identified with. In my case, this is a small example, which is going to be the diet situation. So in order to go on this whole little freaking journey of personal discovery or whatever um I can't really discover parts of me unless I give up parts of me that I thought I already knew existed or I thought that were already there so this is a part that I'm giving up I don't want to but I'm freaking have to do it another way that I think we we stay stuck with where we are is because not just because we have these strict identities but we also feel like we're not we can't go past them like by saying for example oh I'm just not really an emotional person I don't deal well with other people's emotions so therefore I cut it off right then and there and I close myself off to even the possibility of moving forward and moving past that or we we pretend that things didn't affect us in our lives and they actually do that might be a big one too, is acknowledging maybe some of the pain that you felt before or maybe even the fact that you've convinced yourself that the pain, one, didn't happen, it didn't matter, or two, that you no longer feel it. Those in ways I feel are kind of you're creating an identity for yourself and whatever is going on inside of you or whatever you whatever is down there which there is something down there don't act like there isn't that's not going to change until you release how you've defined yourself and defining ourselves is a very very sticky situation to be in because in a way by defining ourselves that almost 
appears to be as if we've known ourselves, not known ourselves, but understand ourselves because we came up with that label. We came, that label came from somewhere and it, it can so easily be understood as like, oh, I am this way. Oh, so therefore I am self-aware. But I think even putting those labels on ourselves, those labels need to be questioned because are we actually as self-aware as we think we are? And in my case, absolutely not. I feel like there's so much I need to learn and it's going to start by releasing who I think I am. And this needs to happen because I guess I didn't know it at the time, but this that I, the journey that I'm on, going and traveling and doing this whole podcast thing and taking and going in different directions, I think the bigger picture is that this for me is a healing journey. And in order to heal anything, I have to let go of placing labels on myself because that just means I feel like I figured it all out already and that there's nothing more to do, but that's not true. There's way more to do, a lot more to do than I realize. Okay, so this is a lot. Traveling inwards outwards and onwards okay and there's a lot more traveling inwards than I thought there was going to be but I guess that is part of this whole unknown thing is when you you don't know where you're going and I don't know where I'm going but I'm already there fuck (laughs) Okay, catch you next time.